We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in to one of ACC's messages. As you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're on social media, use the hashtag you belong at ACC if God taught you anything during this message. We want to get to know you. So check out our online community by watching our live service at arundelcc.org live. This is where you can interact with other viewers in the chat, fill out a prayer request, and follow along with message notes. And we believe that God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Hey, good morning, church. We're glad you're here on this fourth week and final week of our Family Matters series. We've been talking about things that matter, right? A family, it's important. And we're talking about issues of families, right? Family matters. So really glad you're here. Last week, we got to pick on some of the uh, the wives you might have felt a little picked on last week because it was kind of geared towards you. Well, today, as equal opportunity offenders, we're going to pick on the husbands and the guys in the room today in our marriages. Yes. Um, Hebrews 13 verse 4 says marriage should be honored by all. And so we want to recognize as a church that marriage is important, and God has called different people in the marriage relationship, the husband and the wife in the marriage relationship, to different uh, expectations and roles. And so we're going to talk about that from the other perspective today, uh, talking specifically about the five love needs of every wife. You know, last week we talked about the five respect needs of every husband. Today is the five love needs of every wife. So there was a guy... And he was walking along the beach, and he tripped upon a genie lamp. And so he grabbed it, and he rubbed it, and a genie came out and said, I'm going to grant you any one wish. And the guy said, you know what? I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm afraid to fly, and I'm afraid to, to be on a boat in the ocean. So I've never, I'm never going to be able to go unless I wish right now that you build me a bridge from California to Hawaii. And the genie's thinking, and he says, listen, do you know how much concrete that's going to take? What kind of engineering marvel that would be? How far the pylons would have to go into the ocean? That's just, you're asking for too much. Ask me for something else. He says, all right. You know what I would love? I would love to understand the mind of a woman. <laughs> you know what she's thinking? What makes her happy? What makes her sad? Just what's going on and, and all, all that. And the genie thinks for a second. He says... Do you want that to be a two-lane or four-lane bridge, right? <laughs> Which, <laughs> that's going to be much easier, right? And so here's the deal. It would be wrong and inappropriate of me to now try to communicate to the guys in the room what your wives want you to know without the help of my bride. So would you guys uh, welcome Melissa up onto the stage? Yes, she is. Hey. So this morning. is my uh, ex-fiance. <laughs> <laughs> Name Melissa. We have been married 23 years this July. This July. Yeah. So we're almost there. Yeah. On this and so I only share that to say uh, we're not experts, but we do have some some water under the bridge, and we hope to be able to help a little bit. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Let's get Thank you for for being part. Yeah. It's. It's lovely to be up here, and Matt and I certainly enjoyed preparing this um, sermon for you guys today. And so we, our prayer is that God will strengthen our marriages uh, for the glory of his name. So let's start in God's word. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 33. It says, so again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. And that verse is really kind of the the catalyst for these last two weeks. We've been talking about the respect needs of husbands and the love needs of wives. And if you look at Ephesians 5.33, you, you see that there's a different word that is used to describe the relationship between a husband and a wife and a wife to a husband. And so in understanding that we're different, it's also very important to understand that in many ways we're the same. Let me put it this way. Wives in this room, do you like to be respected? Yes. You like to be respected, don't you? And husbands, do you need to be loved? Is that also a need that you have? So in a way, you could argue that these words are interchangeable. But what I would say is that really what, what Scripture is doing is putting a different emphasis on a different syllable. 
Have you ever heard that before, <laughs> right? Just a, a really kind of recognizing that men and women at the heart root of it all have been made differently. But at the same time, God says that there's a lot of about us that's similar. Will you read that next verse yeah, actually absolutely. too? Absolutely. So 1 Peter 3, 7 says, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. Yeah, what's so valuable about that verse, it starts with in the same way. Right? God wants you to know that the same way, uh, husbands, you want to be honored by your wives, your wife also desires and deserves to be honored by you. It's a mutual honor. It's a mutual love. It's a mutual respect, right? And it goes on to say in here, too, that tree, uh, 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 she may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. In other words, make sure we all know this. We are different. Mm -hmm but we are equal. We're equal in, the, in God's plan to, to God created both of us and both you and your, your spouse uh, equally as masterpieces of his. Uh, both of you are, are equally loved by God. God has a plan for both of your lives. God has, and so we're different, but we're equal. And it's important to understand that. So with all that said, um, I'm asking now, Melissa, if you would share with me and with the husbands in the room, and you might not be a husband yet, um, or a wife yet. Uh, listen, if you are not, this information will still be helpful for you. If God's calling you to a future marriage, this information will be good for you. Mm -hmm. And if God's calling you to singleness, this information will still help you figure out uh, what, what women like and need, right? The, the interactions and relationships you have in, in life. So with all that being said, please be gentle. Mm -hmm. Are you nervous? Well, we already, we, we can pretend like we haven't already done this sermon. <laughs> I have no idea what you're going to say. No, you um, do. You do. Please, please okay. tell us. What do we need no. to do? This is, this is good stuff here. I do want to say women get this rap as if we're complicated and complex. And, and we are, but at the same time, <laughs> we're very, it's very basic. We just need to be loved well by our husbands. And so we're going to break that down into maybe some practical steps as to what that looks like. I will say, um, when I was saying, I, I really need you to help me understand the mind of a woman. Mm -hmm. And you said, I don't understand the mind of a woman. Uh, that and is so, what I said. I was like, oh, this will be great. But it's, it's, it's fairly simple. And it what, is. what we, we, we came yeah. up with and what, what you need. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So number one for your notes, we're going to look at the five love needs of every wife. Number one, she wants to be cherished as a priority. So Ephesians 5.28 says, In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. So husbands, your wife wants to know that she is your most favorite person ever. Like, and always. Um, last week, we talked to husbands about how one of the needs they have is to be their wife's hero. They want to, to know that they're like this superhero in your eyes, right? Remember yeah. that? And so um, wives want to know, to connect those two things, wives want to know that when you're the hero, she's the first one that you're going to rescue, mm -hmm. right? She's the, the one that you're, you're going out to protect and to cherish and to honor, yeah, it's really good. Uh, have you ever been in a situation before, probably elementary school, you go out to recess and everybody lines up to, to pick teams, right? You're playing two-hand touch football. Well, I always hated situations like that because I always wanted to play. I wanted to be part of the game. I enjoyed the game. Uh, but I had a nickname in elementary school uh, at recess time. I was called Butterfingers, all right? You throw the ball in my direction. My hands are going to touch it, but probably not going to catch it, right? And so uh, we would line up against the, you know, the, the fence or whatever, and we'd they'd pick two captains. The only way I'd get picked first is if I got to be a captain, which never happened, right? And so where everyone's picking teams, and guess who would get picked last, right? Me. And it was, it was the worst feeling ever, unless I, sometimes I'd bring two people I knew were worse at sports than I was. And I was like, hey, why don't you stand right here? This will make me feel good for a minute, right? Uh, none of us like to be picked last, and I think, Melissa, what you're really explaining is that wives, you want to know that in a lineup, 
you're the first one that's going to be picked every time. Every time, absolutely. Yeah, wives feel loved when they are chosen by their husbands. Um, when, the, when priorities are rearranged so that uh, the way you spend your time and how you um, speak to her shows that she is a valuable, cherished number one yeah. after God in her life. And we have a lot of priorities, right? We have expectations that people have on us, guys. We have, you know, work expectations and yard expectations and house expectations and children expectations and church expectations, all these things. And what your wife simply wants to know, one of the ways you're going to show love to her is say, listen, you are more important to me than any of those things. And notice one of the things I said, it's important for your wife even to know she is more important to you than the children. I would prioritize and sometimes the world says, no, no, we want to pour all of our, we just want to be sacrificial, give everything we got to the kids. And no, I would say that the, your wife needs to be your first choice every time. We sacrifice in that way to make sure our wife knows she gets picked first. And that, how, well, let's talk about this practically for just a moment. I remember a couple years ago, we got into a bit of an argument, not an argument, or maybe. We had some tension. There was some tension. And it was related to this. You... Uh, saw me prioritizing or seemingly prioritizing other people. Other, Can you just explain what sure, we were yeah. talking about? So maybe two, three years ago, it's been a while now, um, Matt would come home from work and he would explain how he had, you know, these one-on-one -on -one meetings with the, the pastors and how they were just working on goal setting and vision casting and five-year goals, three-year goals and different steps to break it down um, and it's super exciting. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I didn't understand why I was frustrated by it until after we processed through it more. And then I realized, well, that's great that you're doing all that with the, the church staff and the church body, but we're not, you're not doing that in our home right now for us. And, and so I was not feeling as if I was as high of a priority or our girls, our, we have three daughters, if our daughters weren't as high of a priority. So we just said, okay, we can, we can do that together. We can, we can goal set. Yeah, and we, we made some changes and figured out a way to make sure that where Melissa was expressing, I'm not feeling like I'm a priority in this way, uh, we moved some things around to make sure that she knows, hey, anything I'm willing to do with someone else, I'm certainly willing to, mm -hmm. to go above and beyond for you. And yeah. so you guys in the room, maybe ladies in the room too, do you remember the old NES systems when you put your cartridge in to play a Nintendo game? There was a special cartridge that you could attach to the end of your cartridge. It was gold, right? And what, anybody know what that, that thing was called? Game Genie, right? And Game Genie, basically what it did is it took all the cheat codes for, that were possible for that game you're about to play and kind of program them in. So they called it a game enhancer, right? It made your game winnable when you couldn't win it on your own. It would make it so that you could actually go into, you know, Mario Brothers and make it all the way to the end because you had all these enhancements. Your guy was running faster now and jumping higher and all these things, right? So what I want to do for each one of these five points is share some game enhancers, some cheat codes. <laughs> Guys, this is the only way where you're allowed to cheat in your marriage, okay? These are <laughs> cheat codes that you can write down and understand that when you do these things, I, I've, I've got these approved by my wife. They're going <laughs> to they're gonna be helpful to you in your marriage, all right? So here's a couple of cheat codes when it comes to cherishing your wife as a priority. Number one, when your wife is wanting to uh, engage with you and be cherished in a conversation, she has something that she wants to share with you. It's important because of the way our minds work, right? We can't do two things at once. That's not the way our mind, we can't be listening in a conversation and on our phone or and watching a game and reading a newspaper. We can't do two things at once. So if you wanna win in this way, one of the ways your wife knows that she's a priority is when she needs your attention, you're gonna set all other priorities aside. You're gonna put your phone in your pocket, you're gonna turn off the TV and you're gonna say, all right, what do you need? and give all of your attention to her. That's good. Is that a good cheat code? That's a, a fabulous one, yeah. Undivided attention, that's good. There's another one um, to, uh, for, sorry, for the, the wife wants you to really know her and just not know about her. You do a good job explaining that one. Yeah, sometimes we think that, hey, our goal, you know, you're sitting across the table, it's just to, 
Your wife just wants to have a conversation so you can get to know about her. Uh, your wife doesn't want to be known about. She wants to be known. So you're really asking questions that get at the root of what's going on in her heart, in her life, her fears, goals, things like that. Really know her, not just questions that know about her, like what was happening in your day today, but how did that make you feel? Or how did, you know, getting to know her heart. Yeah, and maybe, maybe a, a trick thing, guys, that you could pick up on. Pay attention to the questions that your wife asks you, because sometimes that's a clue as to what she wants you to ask her. You know what I mean? So Just ask the same question back. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Because yes. then we, we're, we're feeling connected. If I say, hey, was there something that, that challenged you today at work? It's probably because something challenged me at home, and I really want to talk about it. So I want him to then ask me about that. Another uh, quick uh, hack, and then we're going to move on to the next one, a quick cheat code, game enhancer, all right? Uh, it is simply this. Guys, when you're talking to your wife, or when your wife is talking to you, oftentimes, and I'm really bad at this, I'm probably the worst in the room at this, so I'm not a pro at all. When Melissa talks to me, my goal is to fix whatever problem she's talking about, right? She's talking to me about something, and I'm just thinking like, okay, well, I can solve that. It's because you're so, a good problem solver. And so as soon as she's done talking, I'm ready to fix the problems, right? I think that's the way I show love. But the truth is that sometimes your wife doesn't want anyone to fix her. She just wants to share what's on her heart and on her mind. So a, a cheat code is to ask your wife, when she's done talking, would you like my opinion on this, or are you just uh, kind of uh, sharing what's on your heart? And so to ask the question, yeah. she'll help you out. Think about it this way, guys. When it comes to cherishing your wife as a priority, in your vows that you made on your wedding day, right? When you're standing on the altar and you're sharing your vows, right? Some of the words that we, we use for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, to love and cherish, and then listen to this part, and forsaking all others, forsaking all others. This is how you cherish your wife as a priority, you forsake all others to make sure that her needs are met first. And that love has to be unconditional. Just the way, guys, you like to be respected unconditionally, your wife needs to be loved unconditionally. Yeah, that's great. Okay, right. number two um, is provision and protection. So more than just being cherished, your wife wants to feel safe and secure with you. So if you would... Um, so we're talking, there's two words up there, provision and protection. What are some ways that you feel loved in just, let's just take provision for a second. How do you feel loved through my provision? Yeah, so when I think about provision, I think about how hard of a worker you are, how you provide financially for our family, and not just through finances, but you're responsible. If you say you're going to do something, I know you're going to do it. Some point this year. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, there's that. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I, um, but there's, there's some situations, though, where a husband maybe isn't the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Where maybe uh, it's, so is provision always a financial provision? Or what do you mean when you say needs to be a provider? Yeah, no, that, that's a great point to clarify. Um, provision for your wife isn't, it doesn't matter. You don't have to make more money than she does. Um, and you may be in a situation where you're not able to work. So provision isn't just uh, finance, financial. It's um, about providing for her um, emotional needs, just making sure that the family has a, a plan and feels secure. Yeah, and I would say this. If your family's financial needs, if there's a gap between where you are and where you need to be to be providing for your mm -hmm. family... I would say that is the man's responsibility to close that gap. Mm -hmm. If your family doesn't have that gap and you're providing in other ways, that's an excellent thing. Um, let, me, let me share a verse I think that really does a good job talking about provision and protection. In Ephesians 5, it says, For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. You see, this verse really highlights a very powerful truth. Provision and protection are both about sacrifice. It's, mm -hmm. if, if we're supposed to love our wives the way Christ loved the church, think about what Christ was willing to do for the church. 
I mean, Christ certainly was willing to provide for his bride. He's willing to make sure that you and I who are his children have whatever it is that we need. That's an incredible example of what Jesus does for his church. But he also protects the church. I mean, he was willing to go so far as to give up his own life on the cross for his bride. So husbands, one of the ways your wife is communicating that she wants to be loved by you is for you to provide for her and to protect her. Absolutely. It's all about sacrifice. Yeah, it's about sacrifice. So here's some practical things. Oh, we're moving on to protection. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of protection, we wrote down some like practical things that, that, that fit this. Um, keep your wife from unsafe situations. Don't willingly put her in a situation where she could be harmed. Yeah, we, um, guys, sometimes our egos and our kind of our, I don't know, testosterone or whatever, we, we put ourselves in situations where we actually invite danger into our situation. This might be like a road rage, a road rage sort of situation where we find ourselves, well, you know, my ego won't allow what he just did to me to go un, you know, answered. So I'm now going to go and do that. And before you know it, you're, you're driving unsafe. You have no idea how this person is going to respond back. And you've placed your wife and your children and other people into an unsafe situation. If you want to protect your wife, you're going to keep her from those situations. Yeah, and be willing to step in in dangerous situations. And, and you might think, you know, that typically doesn't happen. But what, husbands, you can show this to your wives in, in simple ways. You know, when Matt and I are walking, you know, downtown Baltimore, wh whatever side of the sidewalk that the cars are on, that's the side that Matt's on. Because if someone's gonna get hit by a car, it, it's gonna be him first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like I, or when we were dating, you know, I, he would like switch hands, right? Like we'll go, on, go on the other side. And it took me a while to figure out like, why, why are you switching sides? And he just explained that like, I'm going to protect you if something were to happen. And so that just speaks volumes. It's a small thing, but it's huge. Um, I, I wrote down, you know, if there's a noise in the middle of the night, he's the one who's going to get out of bed to go downstairs and see what's going on. I'm not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, he needs to kill all the bugs, you know? He's gonna do the, the icky yard work because there could be a snake or something dangerous that I don't wanna come upon. Um, also, just in terms of cars, you know, and you guys can work this out between you, but husbands, the point is you can find practical ways to help your wife feel safe and protected. I don't, I don't the only thing I think about with the car is whether there's gas in it. Other than that, Matt does everything for the car, which is great, because I yeah. wouldn't know when tires need to re be replaced or not. Um, and then lastly, I would even go as far as to say, husbands, know how to use a gun. Like literally take the steps and, and actions that you need to know to, if it ever came to it, you are able and equipped to protect your family. Oh, well, we're stepping on all sorts of things during this series, so. <laughs> Let's add that. Sure. We talk about spanking, men and women. Yeah, all right. Gun rights in there. I, I appreciate that. My bad. Um, yeah. Anything else for protection? I don't want to hurt anybody, but yeah, I will no. if I need to. When it comes to my number one priority, my, my number two priorities, my girls, I will use a gun if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's good. How about number three? Okay, so number three for the five love needs of every wife is regular intimacy. Ooh, okay, so last week I told all the guys that regular intimacy was uh, two times per week was a good goal to have. And yes. so you're saying regular, does that mean even more? Because this is good news. All right. Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. So, so. Yes and no. Essentially, we're not exclusively talking about sex here. Intimacy is so much more than just sex. And sex is important and awesome, but it needs to be more than that for a woman. When you and think about the word intimacy yeah. that you use, if you don't know the definition of the word intimacy that we, we use here at this church, I want you to write it down and really think about this, right? Intimacy is when you are fully known and fully loved. Mm -hmm. It's when someone knows all the parts of you, all the things about you that other people don't get to know. That's uh, fully known. And yet, even in light of all that, you're still fully loved. Mm -hmm. And what I think you are communicating to me as we are writing this is your wife 
wants to know that there's regular, uh, regular kind of daily repetitive experiences that show this intimacy, that, mm-hmm. that we're working to get to know our wives and in light of what we're learning that we love unconditionally. Yeah, absolutely. We wrote down that daily intimacy equals affection. And so when we, we, when we switch the word from intimacy to affection, we can connect some, some daily things that are easy for husbands to do. Yeah. When, uh, when Melissa and I were dating, uh, when you were dating your, your wife, you were in uh, what I call pursuit mode, right? You were trying to woo her, trying to woo her, turn her, her over, her ex- turn her into your, your ex-girlfriend and into your fiancé, right? Fiance, turn her from your ex-fiancé to your wife. And so there was a lot of problems and written cards and hey. Right? And then, and then she says, I do. And we're like, all right, she's locked in. She can't go anywhere. And then all those things, that pursuit phase seems to switch off because you're like, all right, I, I won her over. She's mine now. And, and she can't go anywhere. And then the truth is your wife does not feel loved when you stop pursuing. Mm-hmm. Think about it this way. I... I know what you all are thinking. I know those of you who are watching online right now, you're looking at the two of us, and you know who got the better end of this deal. You're not going to offend me. I know how lucky I am to be married to this woman. And there are plenty of men out there who would love to be where I'm at. And so what happens when I say I'm going to daily pursue this regular intimacy When I pursue those steps, what I'm really saying to her, what I'm communicating non-verbally is I believe that there's competition out there, that you're a great catch, that there are, that if I just stop caring and stop pursuing and stop meeting your emotional intimacy needs that you have, that someone else is going to step in and do it. And so I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pursuing and keep doing those things. Now, those things obviously slow down a little bit, but there's still no reason that they they need to stop altogether. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Let me see. Uh, So we're talking about daily intimacy, that that version of affection. Mm -hmm. What what does that look like for you? Like, what are the things that I do that show you affection, like, physically? Yeah. Um, You know, I love to hold Matt's hand when we are out on a date or, you know, sitting in church. Um, Hugs. Hugs are huge, like give me a hug in the morning. Um, What else was I going to say? You you, um, don't know how to go to bed or wake up not completely attached to my body in some way. (laughs) That is true. Oh, that's what I was going to say. She's a cuddler. Yeah. I I was going to say, ask your wife. Like each one of us are different. Ask your wife, hey, what speaks affection to you? How can I, what are simple things throughout the day that I can do to show you love. I think the key point here is for it to be um, a regular habit in your life. Um, the other thing too that is awesome is text her. Like send her a text throughout the day and just say, hey, how you doing? I'm thinking about you. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would ar- add to this also, those kisses, those hugs, uh, holding hands, arms around, scratching the back, all that stuff. Do that in front of your kids. Do that in front of your children. There's certainly some things you don't want to do in front of your kids. But the, the simple things that say, I want you to know, number one, where you are on the pecking order of this house. Hmm. Your, your, your mom is, is important to me. I want them to know that. And second, I want them to have a model that one day when they're, that I have three daughters, right? So when they're looking around for a potential suitor, right, a husband, that they're, they're willing to hold out for someone who's going to love them the way their dad loves their mom. Mm-hmm. That's important to me. It's also, I think, important because when your children know that mom and dad love each other, uh, this, the home is a safer, uh, more vibrant um, place where people thrive. So it's important to do that. So here's a couple cheat codes we wrote down just real quick. Uh, um, kind words on a daily basis. Guys, tell your wife that she's beautiful. Tell her uh, that she's gifted and talented. Use, use your words to compliment her on a daily basis. I would even go so far. Melissa said to text her. That's a great way to do it. I, can you plug your ears for just a second? Guys, I Not have really. uh, like a reminder on my phone. 
to send my <laughs> wife. Just it just pops up, text your wife. Why? Because I just don't think that way. That's yeah. not one of my needs. And so it's just a reminder on my phone. And then when but it pops still, up. That still counts because he took the, he knew that would be important. He took the time to put the reminder in and then he could ignore the reminder when it pops up on his phone, right? He could just ignore it. So then he still, in that moment, chooses, I'm going to show my wife affection right now by sending the text when I see the reminder. Now, here's, a, here's one I would like to make, uh, as your pastor, I'd like to make a non-negotiable. If you're a part of this church, and we're going to be a church of healthy marriages, guys, you need to date your wife on a weekly basis. I promise you, if you don't want to date her, there's someone else who does. And so one of the ways we're going to show affection and regular intimacy towards our wives to make sure she knows she's a priority is to say every week for us, uh, we have a rhythm of Tuesdays. Tuesdays are date night. It's the, it's awesome. It's the best night for date night. (laughs) The movie theater is like five bucks. Hamburgers are half off just about everywhere. I know I sound super (laughs) cheap right now, but I'm telling you, if you want a great date night, an inexpensive date night, and date nights don't even have to cost anything. If you're thinking, well, we got kids and we don't got a lot of money, well, you don't have to go anywhere for a great date night. Yeah, Grab one of those couple adventure books, and there's also, you can bake something together in the kitchen Mm -hmm. and have a date right at home, right? You don't need to go anywhere and spend a bunch of money. Absolutely. That's right. And so that's that's important. Let's date our wives, non-negotiable. Mark it off on your calendar. If someone calls and says, hey, are you available next Tuesday? It's just easy to say, no, I'm not. I have plans on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. Non-negotiable. Weekends away. Here's another cheat code, guys. Spend some time overnight with your bride without the kids. Now, how often you can do that? Uh, I would shoot for at least every year that you're getting away without the kids for at least a weekend. My wife and I, on our anniversary week, we go away for the whole week without the kids. And we go someplace that the kids would love to go. (laughs) (laughs) True. And they just get to see, wow, dad really loves mom. And one day my husband might take me there. I put a um, little widget on my phone that's a countdown to when our next trip is because I look forward to it. I mean, it's our special week together. So we're down to like three months in one day. (laughs) So we can go. That's awesome. Um, Another cheat code I wrote down is is gifts. Listen, guys, if your wife says she doesn't like gifts or doesn't need gifts to feel loved, she's lying to you. (laughs) And here's, here's why I say that. She probably doesn't think that she's lying to you if she says that. She probably has convinced herself that she doesn't need gifts to feel loved. And here's why. Number one, it's because we give lousy gifts. And so to lower her expectations, she's just like, you know what? I'm just going to convince myself I don't need gifts. And so when I get one every once in a while, it doesn't, uh, whatever, I'm not bummed about it. And if the gift's not that great, it's not that big of a deal. Here's the other reason wives uh, in general say they don't like gifts is they're so sacrificial, especially when it comes to children. They're willing to give up whatever it was you were going to spend on them to make sure the children have what they need. Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's one of the ways that they've, they've convinced themselves they don't like gifts, but my, the truth is they do. They do. And when you make a sacrifice and say, hey, I'm not going to spend this on the children. I'm not going to spend this on me. I'm going to spend this on you. It speaks incredible intimacy and it, love. It does. And remember with your gift husbands, it doesn't have to be big. Like we're not expecting these big things. Every gift should just communicate the thought that, I thought about you. You're important to me. Yeah, you know? so a gift could cost zero dollars, right? A poem. Mm-hmm. Those Probably. are the best. Those are the best gifts. Yeah. Um, just things that say, you know, if your wife says she likes something, put a note in your phone. And then six months later, go get it for her. And she'll, wow, he thought It could be like enough. two months later. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to wait six. That's fine, though. All right. Uh, let's talk about sex. Okay. Let's. Let's talk about sex. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sorry for the warning. Uh, No warning. Lack of warning. (laughs) That's terrible. Uh, Yeah. So why? why, As we're talking about regular intimacy, part of regular Mm -hmm. intimacy clearly is a sex life, a healthy sex life. Yeah. So, sex really is the ultimate form of full and complete intimacy between a husband and a wife. So it is a huge, important element for sure. You think about. intimacy, right? It's being fully known. When you're in, in an act of lovemaking, right, you have 
uh, intimacy in every way. There's a physical intimacy. There's uh, parts of your, your bodies that no one else gets to know about. No one else gets to see or touch or explore, right? And so there's an intimacy in that physical sense, but then you tie that into uh, spiritual intimacy and emotional intimacy and all those things, mm-hmm. and it just speaks volumes. Let me, let me explain it this way. Uh, if any of you think that what I was talking about last week about sex for the husband is important, if you thought that that means men have a higher sex drive than women, you misunderstood me. Because you know, a lot of women have a much stronger sex drive than their husbands. Uh, and in fact, in different seasons of life, you might find that your sex drive was higher and another season your wife's sex drive is higher. Uh, but in general, that every marriage is a little different, but women and men typically have pretty equal sex drives on average. And the, the thing is though, that the need that's being met, the mm-hmm. itch that's being scratched in the act of lovemaking, when we're having sex together, it's different. Mm-hmm. Because for guys, it's kind of like a, it's more of a, a physiological urge that's being met and a, an, an ego that's being scratched. And it makes me feel like a man who's loved and, and, and attractive and like that's, and it, it, that's what I feel when, I, when we're having sex. But for a woman, right, it's, it's different, right? Yeah, keep going. You're fine. <laughs> uh, for, for a wife, it's, it's more of a, uh, that intimacy. It's I'm right now in this act being fully known and, and fully loved. It's emotional, spiritual, physical intimacy all at once. And that's important to, to women in, in general. Mm-hmm. So you want to share some cheat codes when yes. it comes to sex? So we wrote codes. these together, uh, but my wife told me she doesn't want to say them out loud. So I'm going to tell you what my wife wants you to know. <laughs> Here's the first thing. Guys, I can we, do this one. You would do, you want to do this one? I can do this one. Okay. okay. So um, when you're having sex with your wife, tell your wife that you love her. Like, literally use your words and speak those things to her. Say, I love you, use their name. Um, And also, while you're having sex, like, compliment her body. Tell her how beautiful she is. Like, we need and want to hear that. Yeah, during that act, right? Guys, uh, where just passion and excitement is all that we need. Our our wives typically need to connect the being known with the being loved during mm-hmm. that moment. So yeah. tell her that you love her while you're, you're making love. Uh, here's another one. This one's a little more awkward, but guys, the Bible says that we need to know, fully know our wives. And one of the ways we do that is by showing her we've taken the time to learn her body. We've taken the time to learn her spots, what feels good, what doesn't, what's comfortable, what's not. And one of the ways that we show love and intimacy is just saying, I know you so well, I know what, what you enjoy and what you don't. And, and let me add to that too, another, another cheat code. Everyone should walk away from the experience happy. Think about that for a minute. That's as detailed as I'm gonna get, all right? <laughs> if your sex life is always one person walking away fulfilled and the other person walking mm-hmm. away feeling used, uh, that's not going to lead to a, a healthy, happy marriage. Now, there's certainly yeah. gonna be moments where you've, you've you know, you only got five minutes, right? You've got five minutes, I got this need, and, and not everyone's needs are being met in that moment. But what you're finding is uh, there's a balance to that. And, and when you kind of look at the scales, uh, in, on average in your marriage, everyone is walking away feeling satisfied that, that sexually their needs are being met. Here's what the Bible says about that. Mm-hmm. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. So as a couple, we're all unique in our, our marriages, right? You figure out what those needs are and do what you need to do to make sure you're meeting those needs. It's important. Mm-hmm. You want to share about the research? Who are you? Oh, okay. Um, guys, just so you know, research shows that female infidelity <clears throat> doesn't happen because a wife thinks that another guy is super attractive. The, the, the reason a wife would choose to be um, unfaithful to her husband is because this other guy was affectionate with her, was showing her attention and getting to know her. Yeah, really being attentive to her and sensitive to her needs in the way her husband wasn't doing. So 
Don't let someone else mm -hmm. um, date your wife. Don't let someone else get to know your wife. Be intimate with your wife. You do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, number number four. Okay. So number four is spiritual leadership, and this one is huge. Um, most importantly, husbands, you guys need to be pursuing godliness. Like it is incredibly important. Do you want to share the two things? Yeah. Well, first, let me uh, share this this quote with you. A wife. Mm wants a marriage as a cord with three strands, God, husband, and wife. Mm -hmm. She wants God to be inextricably woven throughout the marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. This is incredibly important. So guys, what that means is that when it comes to being a good husband, meeting the actual love needs of your wife, your wife wants to be led spiritually. She wants you to, to be a, a, a grown adult when it comes to your maturity of your faith. And so that means we got to do two things. Number one, guys, we got to be, simply put, we need to be a godly man. You need to be a godly man if you're going to lead your wife spiritually. In Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Ladies in this room, how many of you want a husband who trusts in the Lord with all of his heart? Yeah. That's what, you, you got to start there. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of this, once you're uh, pursuing God and doing everything his way, right, you're being a godly man, you then want to be committed to being faithful to your wife. And I'm not just talking about sexual faithfulness, like infidelity. I'm talking about doing the things over and over again with consistency that God has called you to do. Being faithful to being the man, the husband that your wife needs. It says in Proverbs 5.15, drink water from your own well. Share your love only with your wife. And so again, it's not just sexual faithfulness. Here, here's the way I would word this. is do what you have been called to do faithfully. All these things that Melissa is communicating that we, uh, the guys that, that they need from us, we need to faithfully do these things, right? Yeah, and, and I, I want to point out that <clears throat> this spiritual leadership doesn't have to mean you have all the answers or you know scripture inside and out. It's more of this daily um, pursuit of you as a husband individually growing in your relationship with God and then also doing things um, consistently in small ways that lead her spiritually. For example, pray with her in the morning. Just take a minute and just say a quick prayer together um, or, or before bed. You know, say a prayer, thank God, whatever prayer requests you guys have, you can pray that together. Ask her how she's doing with her soul care. Ask her how she's growing spiritually. And then that will just really open up conversations for you guys to to share what God is doing in each of your hearts. All right, so two quick cheat codes when it comes to spiritual leadership. Two things that you can do that will immediately start speaking love to your wife. The first one is to create some rhythms in your calendar. Go into your calendar and just say, you know what, this day of the week is date night. Just create that rhythm. Go into your, your mind and say, hey, every night before I go to bed, I'm going to pray with my wife. Uh, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Work, even talk to your wife and ask her, what are some rhythms that would be, mm. if added to our marriage, would help you feel, feel loved? And so that, that rhythm one is really important. Yeah. And there's one other cheat code. So the last one is guardrails. Um, it would be great for you and your wife to sit down and establish guardrails that protect um, the husband and the wife from veering off into unsafe territory. Yeah. Do you guys understand that picture of a guardrail? I mean, when you're on a road, you understand why a guardrail's there, right? They put up a guardrail to keep you from going off the road and into a cliff, uh, you know, off of a cliff and, and dying, right? The guardrail's gonna do some damage if you hit it, but it's there to keep you from dying, right? And so what, one of the ways you're gonna speak love to your wife is by creating guardrails. And, and here's, I'll give you some examples of guardrails that we have just quick, because we're, we're running out of time. Uh, I have a couple of guardrails that, are, that, that I want to share with you. One, I won't ride in a car alone with a woman who's not my wife or family. So if, if one of you at the end of the service, you're like, hey, I really need a ride home. Could you give me a quick ride home? 
I'm going to say, hey, I really care about you, but I care about my wife and my marriage more. So the answer is no. It's not because I don't trust myself or I don't trust this other person. It's just because it's a guardrail. And can I find a Bible verse that says, don't ride in the car with another woman who's not your wife? I'm not going to find that verse. <laughs> it's, not, it's not wrong for me to do it, but it becomes wrong for me to do it because we set up a guardrail that says I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I won't. Uh, here's another guardrail. I won't go out uh, one-on-one a meal, sit down at a table with someone else's wife or someone else's daughter, some, another woman. Mm-hmm. Unless it's my family, my, one of my, my own daughters, my wife, obviously, uh, I'm fine with that. But when I go out with other staff, you know, me and Mac or me and John or me and Michael will go out one-on-one and have a meal together. We do that. Um, but unfortunately, it's not fair, but I don't do that with the ladies on staff. And you might think, well, that's not fair. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's it's a guardrail yeah. that we've set up. Yeah, and, and guardrails are healthy for everybody on the road. I have They're guardrails on my phone. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, we have a parental, uh, she's not my parent, <laughs> but she has a code that she's got to type in and to turn off certain, like I have filters on my phone to keep me from uh, going or veering off, seeing things that I shouldn't be seeing. And, and, and she controls that and can see everything and, I do. And real quick, guardrails aren't set up because, um, because there's a lack of trust or because, you know, something wrong was done. They're there to, for your protection to keep you on the right path. Yeah, I've never gone off the road into a cliff before, but when I drive around the corner, there's still a guardrail. Right. And so it's there just in case. Mm-hmm. So set up those guardrails. They speak love to your wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, number number five, what do we got? Okay, the last one is um, a shared adventure. This one, this one is really exciting. You guys are one in your marriage. So travel this life together. You know, we, we women, we really want to, to be your helpmate. So vision cast for us, like give us this adventure that we can go on together and, and support you with. It's important that you don't hear that what I'm saying is that the guys, you just get to come up with what's going on and the wives just have to begrudgingly follow mm-hmm. along because right. that shouldn't be the way you come up with a goal and vision for your family. What, mm-hmm. what Melissa and I do, especially after that conversation we had where Melissa wasn't feeling prioritized. I was setting goals with people on staff, but I wasn't setting goals in the home. We started a tradition about three years ago where we go away now for uh, a weekend, and it's just vision. Uh, where We plan together what God wants our family to do that next year. We, we come up with some goals, something that might be something we want to fix in the house or something that we're trying to uh, work on in our marriage, something that one of our girls needs. And we write those things down, and, and then she knows the journey that we're going to be going on together. Mm-hmm. And we both agree on those things. And we're, we're walking through these, this adventure together. There's, uh, there's a song that we love. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you've never heard this song, look it up. It's called Dancing in the Minefields. Is it Andrew Peterson? Yeah, Andrew Peterson, yeah. And the whole concept of this song is that out in this broken world that we live in, there's minefield, there's a minefield out there. There's, there's bombs and things that want to create havoc. Uh, wreak havoc and cause chaos in your marriage. There's all sorts of people that want to, uh, there, there's, a, there's a world out there. Satan wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your marriage. So we recognize that everywhere we go in our marriages, in our families, we're, we're basically in a huge minefield. And the concept of the song is I want someone to dance through this minefield with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's you. Too funny. Yeah forever. Yep. You know, guys, invite your wife into the God-given dream that God has put on your heart. She wants to be your biggest helper. So communicate that to her. Give her a shared mission that you both can pursue together. And I promise you, your wife loves to adventure with her man. Yeah. So a couple cheat codes. One, uh, an annual, like I said, vision planning meeting together. You don't have to go anywhere. If you just want to designate, hey, this weekend, we're going to sit down at the table together. And we're going to come up with some goals for our family. And the reason year, we say weekend is because pray over it. It takes time. 
You know, go to God, ask him for the Holy Spirit to guide you guys into what that vision needs to be, what area in each of your lives you need to work on. All right, here's our what now, God. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> guys, I wanna encourage you to take these five things you see on the screen right here. Talk to your wife about these things and say, hey, tell me more about what maybe Melissa didn't mention or something else that really stuck out to you. And take some of those cheat codes, those game enhancers from the Game Genie that we just gave you and apply them to your marriage and you will find that your wife feels loved. All right, let's pray together. Thank you, God, so much for the opportunity we have today to open up your word and explore truths about love needs of our wives. God, I pray that you would help this be a church of marriages that are thriving that where there's weakness and all of us have it in all of our marriages we have our struggles would you point those things out and help us to know what to do so that uh, as husbands we can properly show love to our wives the way you love your church help us to be sacrificial jesus the way you were for your church uh, that that we know as a church that we are your priority that you you care about us we know that you are willing to provide for and protect us, right? We know that, you're, that you want to know us and love us unconditionally, that incredible intimacy. The way you model each of these things for us is the way that we ought to love and sacrifice for our wives. So would you help us be godly husbands who can do that well? Uh, thank you for the model you provide. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. We are so thankful for the truth that was shared in the message today. Please know that we as a church are praying that what you have learned today and the truths that God has put deep into your heart will manifest and grow into something amazing. You can experience that with other believers at ACC on Sunday mornings at 710 Aqua Heart Road. And remember, you belong at ACC.